Hello everyone, Chris CB Model Works. Welcome back to my garage. This video is gonna be part two of the Tamiya 124 Skyline GTR. Today we're gonna to be getting the chassis and wheels done on this one. Also tried to push myself and decided to make my first attempt at heat staining the exhaust. So you'll have to let me know how I did when you see how this one came out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let's jump in and get this one started. We're going to start this one off by going back in time about three weeks to when I was painting the body. It was primed with Tamiya Fine Surface Primer and painted with Model Master Gloss Black Acrylic at the same time as I was painting the body. I'm still not happy with how this sprayed, but being the underside of the car I'm not too worried about it. Fast forward to present day, I'm spraying the wheel wells and fuel tank with Tamiya Semi Gloss Black. I'm spraying very lightly to avoid any overspray, but any I do get will probably be covered by suspension parts anyway. Next up, the intercooler and all the individual suspension parts. They're all getting base painted with Tamiya Semi Gloss Black. Some of these parts are going to stay black, but some of them are going to get a coat of silver. I'm not going to show every single part being painted, because if I did, this video would be way too long. So this is the next day, and we're going to spray some of the suspension parts in silver so that we can break up all the black underneath the car. I'm using Mr. Color Super Metallic 2 Super Fine Silver 2, which turned out to be a great color. This is a new paint to me, but after seeing other people use it, I thought I'd give it a try, and I was not disappointed. This is an absolutely beautiful aluminum looking color. So using the same paint, I got a little brave here and decided to just freehand the silver on the engine and transmission. Wasn't too worried about overspray. Anything that was there I could touch up later on. And we got our brake disc and the intercooler. This paint is thinned one to one with Tamiya lacquer thinner and it sprayed great. No issues, nice and smooth. On to brush painting now. We're going to paint over all the areas where we got the silver overspray. Using the same Tumia X18 Semi Gloss Black. I probably could have masked all this stuff off, but for me it's a lot easier to just brush it afterwards than to mask off all these little tiny parts. I also really enjoy the brush painting. So this looks like the next day. I'm painting the control arms with some Vallejo Model Air Silver. I haven't had much luck spraying this paint, but it makes an excellent brush paint. And it looks like we got a little bit of movie magic going on. As you can see the struts and the brake calipers are already painted, but we haven't shown that yet. But not to worry, we'll get to those coming up here soon. All right, so now we're gonna paint those brake calipers we're using Tamiya LP62 Titanium Gold. This was my first time using this paint as well, and I haven't had much luck brushing metallics on, so I wasn't sure how this was gonna brush paint, but it ended up brushing really well. I was testing this paint on some spoons earlier and it also airbrushes really well. This kit comes with a couple of Brembo decals for the front calipers. They went on no problem with a little bit of microset.
Moving on, we're gonna do the heat shields next, using Vallejo Model Air Silver on this one. I missed a big chunk of this part, kept going out of camera view. I guess I was paying more attention to the football game I was watching than what I was doing. And now we're onto the rear muffler heat shield. And for some reason, I picked the tiniest paintbrush that I have to do this part. It's getting the job done, but it's going to take forever. And then I overcompensated with one of the biggest brushes I have. Bit of a weird combination, but it got the job done in the end. And now onto the struts. We're gonna paint the main body of the strut in Tamiya X2 white. The first coat of the white paint didn't cover very well, so I ended up needing to give it a second coat. Using Tamiya X7 red on the springs, and this part took a lot of patience. I really had to take my time doing these. The little bit you're seeing here is on three times speed. And it's too bad that once the car's together, I'll never see these again. Cause man, I'm happy how they came out. The exhaust we will see, so we need to make sure this comes out good. We're starting off with a base of Outflag Gloss Black. I found this stuff doesn't really need a primer, so I didn't use any, just went straight to the Gloss Black. This is a couple days later, and we're spraying Outflag Chrome onto the exhaust. And then we're gonna let it sit for a few days before we move on to trying some heat staining on it. Here's where I decided to test myself a little bit. I saw a couple videos from guys doing heat staining on exhaust and thought I should give it a try. But I was really nervous about this part because that exhaust was looking good the way it was. And I really didn't want to ruin it. So we're starting with some Tamiya Clear Orange. At first I had it thin 50-50 using Tamiya Lacquer Thinner. It wasn't spraying that good, so I ended up thinning it some more to about 75% thinner. And then as I'm spraying it, I'm barely pulling back on the trigger. And I'm trying to keep the airbrush moving and not let it sit in one spot. I'm trying to pull back on that trigger so lightly that most of what you see here, there's not even any paint coming out of the airbrush. Now that the orange is done, I'm gonna move on to some Tamiya Clear Blue. The blue I mixed 50-50 and it seemed to spray just fine. Using the same technique that I used for the orange, I'm just trying to keep that airbrush moving. I'm not trying to get big areas of blue, just little highlights here and there. Again, just barely pulling back on that trigger. Most of this, no paint even coming out of the airbrush. So in doing this, I was just trying to add a little bit of extra detail to the model. I didn't want to go overboard. I think I was pretty successful with that. On the wheels, I'm trying to achieve a bronze color. And to get there, I'm gonna use four different colors on these wheels. I'm going to start using all clad gloss black base. And the second coat is going to be the Tamiya LP62 titanium gold, which unfortunately I forgot to record. So 
now we're moving on to our third color on the wheels, and that's going to be, to me, a clear orange. We're going to do about two coats on each wheel. This is going to give us a nice orange gold color on the wheels, which we'll then need to darken up to get our bronze. And to darken it up, we're going to use Tamiya Smoke. That did two fairly heavy coats to achieve the shade of color that I wanted. They definitely look bright orange on camera, but to my eye in person, they're much darker. The tires had very small seam lines in the middle of the tread that's easily taken care of with a drill and a sanding stick. And now we're done painting and we can finally put this stuff together. Everything here was put together using Loctite CA glue. And I'm trying out a new camera position. So you guys will have to let me know if you like this one or the one from earlier in the video better. I like to use a toothpick for the CA glue so I don't end up getting too much on the parts. And there's our brake disc going in. And our upper control arms. And on the rear struts, there's a little cutout on the very top that helps you line them up the correct direction. And we want to get the rear sub assembly in before the glue on the struts dries. That way we can still move them around into the correct position. Now we got all our stabilizers and supports. Again, using the Loctite CA glue, just the tiniest amount in the mounting positions. and exhaust next. Since it was painted with the all clad chrome, you gotta be careful not to handle it too much because it will rub the chrome paint off. Moving on to the front axle now. I'm gonna start by putting the strut assemblies in. A little bit of CA and then in go the struts. These are left and right, so make sure you got them in on the correct sides or your suspension parts won't line up correctly. And there's number two. So now we're gonna put in the oil pan slash drive axle assembly. Now the steering rack and the knuckles. This one took me a minute. Since I cut everything off the sprue, I couldn't remember which one was the left, which one was the right, or which direction the steering rack went. Once I figured out which direction everything went, it went into the car without any problems at all. using my tweezers just to move the axles over a little bit and allow the steering knuckles to drop right in. Next up, the front shield and the control arms, and we're almost done with this one.
All right, just a few more parts to go. We got our transmission mount. And the front support here. Next up is the intercooler and then our front brake disc and we're done with this one. So thanks for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll leave you with some pictures and we'll see you in part three.